Welcome back to DIY My Way. For quite a long time now, I have dreamed of having an easy way of locking and unlocking my loader's SQA. That is, the skid steer quick attach system. Maybe I'm just lazy, but I just didn't enjoy having to get off the tractor just to swap implements on the front of my tractor. It would be so nice if I could just stay on the tractor and swap implements without having to take the time to get off. I'd seen examples of it being done hydraulically, but I knew that would be expensive and complicated, and I didn't want to involve that. I wanted to see if I could do it electrically with a linear actuator. And after some research and experimentation, I found I could do it. But I had some ambitious criteria to this project, and one was that ideally, I didn't want to make any modifications to the actual SQA mechanism itself. Ideally, I wanted to design it such that if I had to remove it for any reason, I would be right back to my original factory SQA. Another criteria I had is to make it as inexpensive as possible using his off-the-shelf parts and hopefully what I had laying around. And most of this, besides the actuator itself, is what I had laying around. So if you'll stick around, I'll show you exactly how I went about designing and building this. And maybe give you some tips for your SQA in case it's a little bit different. There are some general rules you can apply in case the dimensions uh, are slightly different. Before I get into the design and build details, let me demonstrate how it works. When I need to change from my bucket to my pallet forks, I flip a toggle switch on the dashboard to unlock the SSQA. The linear actuator retracts and the SSQA is unlocked. Now I can drop the bucket and head for the pallet forks. Once I've picked up the pallet forks, I curl them all the way back, then flip the switch to the lock position. The actuator extends, locking the SSQA. I'm off to my next task, and I never had to get off the tractor. That's what I'm talking about. Most SSQA mechanisms I've seen have a design similar to this, L-shaped handles that pivot spring links which push or pull the locking pins. The simplest way to control the mechanism is to push and pull between these two pivot bolts. Done right, it won't need any permanent modifications to the mechanism. Please note that my loader is a Kubota LA525, which is made for the Kubota L-series tractors. While this project is specific to this loader, you may be able to adapt many of the techniques and ideas to whatever brand loader you have. The first thing is to measure the difference in distance between the pivot bolts and the locked and unlocked positions. Starting in the unlocked position, I measure the distance between the bolts. It's 27 inches. I put the SSQA in the lock position and again measure the distance between the bolts. That distance is 34 and 3 quarter inches. The difference between the two is 7 and 3 quarter inches. This is the stroke length I need from a linear actuator. We interrupt this program to bring you this special subliminal message. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Before you do anything else, I highly recommend you watch my video on SSQA maintenance to make sure it's operating as smoothly and easily as possible, so the linear actuator doesn't have to work any harder than necessary. Now on to the business of choosing a linear actuator. There are a lot of 12 volt linear actuators to choose from with prices ranging from less than $40 to over $600 with widely varying specs. The main ones to pay attention to are stroke length, actuator force, travel speed, maximum current draw, and weatherproof rating. I chose an Eco LLC 8 inch linear actuator I found on Amazon. 
It has a stroke length of 8 inches, which is as close to the 7 and 3 quarter inches travel as I could find, and I figure I could build in a quarter inch of play into the mechanism. The maximum load force is 225 pounds, which I simply guessed at. The travel speed is 0.55 inches per second. The power requirements are 12 volts DC with a maximum current draw of 3 amps. The housing is made of aluminum and has an IP54 rating, which means it is resistant to dust and rain or splashed water, but not sprayed water. Like most all linear actuators, it has internal limit switches that turn it off when it reaches the fully extended or fully retracted positions. Mounting brackets are included. It weighs only two and a half pounds. Best of all, it's priced at only $41.99 as of the release of this video. There's a link to it and other materials I used in the video description. Once it arrived, I did a few tests. The first test was whether it worked at all by powering it with the trusty benchtop power supply I built back in high school. I notice it draws one amp with no load on the actuator. So far, so good on the extension. Success. The built-in limit switches did their job. Next, I get a feel for the force of the actuator. I can't stop it, so that's a good sign. Now the most important test. Is it strong enough to lock the SSQA? Well, it locked it on one side, but slipped off the other, so I had to back it up a bit and try again. Bingo, that's encouraging. Can it also unlock the SSQA? Yes, it can. Now I can move on to building the parts, beginning with the tabs that will go on the pivot bolts. I used 2 inch by 1 8 inch thick steel flat bar and cut two 4 inch pieces. I remove one of the pivot bolts so I can use the washer as a reference for drilling the pivot hole in the flat bar. I don't want the tab to stick out beyond the washer, so the pivot hole needs to be here. I measured the diameter of the washer and it's 1 and 3 8 inch. So the center of the pivot hole will be a half inch and three sixteenths from the end of the bar, also known as 11 sixteenths. I scratch and mark 11 sixteenths back from the end of the flat bar. Then scratch a center mark. And use my center punch to make a divot for the pivot hole. Of course, I repeat the steps for the other tab. In order to have room for the tab to move freely, I'll need to extend the pivot bushing by a little more than an eighth of an inch. And it so happened that I had some 3 8 inch washers, 7 8 inch in diameter, which is just about the same as the bushing, and a little more than 1 16 inch thick each. So I just needed two of them, and I had my bushing extension. 
but I did have to enlarge the 3 8 inch holes in the washers to fit the pivot bolt. Time to drill the pivot holes in the tabs. First, a decent pilot hole. then a one inch hole. I hate it when that happens. Then I cut the outside corners to 45 degrees. And smooth off the edges. So let's see if this will work like I want it to. I put the retaining washer on the pivot bolt, followed by the two spacer washers. Yep, the tab pivots freely on the spacer washers with the bolt tightened down. Great! Stay tuned for part two where I finish building the pieces, assemble and install the actuator, and wire up the electrical controls. I strongly encourage you to watch part two before buying any hardware and starting to build it.